Hello friends, this is Brent, the EdTech Principal at EdTech.tv. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the basics. Um, Google Forms, and this is kind of just the 101. You can do a lot with Google Forms, uh, but today I just want to get really into the basics of it. Um, a little bit of history, Google Forms is a part of what is called Google Drive, and it used to be called Google Docs. And I don't know why they keep changing names on everything, but... Regardless, uh, this is one of the key factors that you can use inside of Google uh, to really improve your education, and a lot of teachers take advantage of this, and so if you're not taking advantage of it, I want to give you just kind of the, uh, the a simple introduction on how to use Google Forms. All right, so here we're going to talk about forms for class. We're also going to talk about how to make basic forms, and then at the end, I'm going to give you a secret bonus trick. So the first question is, what are forms and how do I use them? Well, forms are actually just a way to collect information, the same as your forms that you use in paper that you hand out. Um, you'll give them to the students, they fill out the information, and then you collect that information and use it however you like. But there is one big difference. The really nice thing is that the info here is automatically put into spreadsheets and you can use that to calculate whatever you want, um, whether it be looking for common trends, looking for certain kinds of information, um, automatically tallying scores, all that types of things. So what we would say is that it's really great for running surveys, quizzes, etc. Um, and if you're not doing this, you're wasting a lot of time. I know some teachers that are still handing out papers on a regular basis and kind of collecting that information then looking it all over and so much of this can just be done really quickly with Google Forms and so today we're going to take a look at just how to do that. Once you log into Gmail and I know you have a Gmail account, right? So uh, if you don't, make sure you get a Gmail account. Um, once you log in, go click right over here on this little grid iron, and that says Apps. And then you're going to drop right down to Google Drive. So I'm going to show you exactly how to use it. It's really easy. All you have to do is click on Create, and then drop down to Form. It'll open up a new window. And it'll first ask you to choose a title and theme. And then you can choose all these different um, designs. They really kind of don't give you a lot of selection, but you know, there's 15 or something like that. Um, whichever one suits for your class or for your needs, uh, we'll kind of keep ours real simple. Uh, we'll go with the note paper one, I guess and then say okay and here we are it's going to get you right into the very first question now google defaults you to uh, a multiple choice question right here at the beginning but i usually like to start with a simple text question and i like to ask what the student's name is um if you want to add a little bit of extra help, obviously people's first name doesn't need a lot of help, but um, but I'll say the name and I'll keep it as a text question. Now there are a lot of different choices here. Uh, text, paragraph text, multiple choice, check boxes, choose from a list. Um, we'll keep it up to the first few just to kind of describe what they do because we just want to keep it simple for you and you can play around and find a lot of it. But I would also say that you would make this a required question because I want to make sure they're definitely answering this question. Now, here I'm asking for their first question and then I would be done except obviously I want to create more questions. So I'm gonna add an item at the bottom and I'm gonna say last name. <laughs> All right, and then again a text question and I'm gonna make it required. Um, so the next one I'm going to add is actually going to be a multiple choice. And I'll ask the question. What period are you in my class? And then I can up to, let's say, first. 
second, and let's just say I only have three third. Okay. Um, again, I can make this a required question, as I would probably do on all of these. Now, very quickly, I'm going to go through a couple of the other types of questions, the ones that you're most likely to use. So, um, if I add I can make a uh, checkbox question which allows students to choose multiple choices of what they like. So, okay, um, I can also choose a different type of question. Maybe I want to have um, them choose from a list instead of uh, a multiple choice for some reason. They're basically the same type of thing, but um, it's choosing one out of a list on a drop-down list. Um, so maybe um, we can also do questions that are um, scale. So maybe one to five. Uh, what do you think of this class? Hate it. Now be careful, you might not want to actually ask this, but uh, just for example's sake. Or love it. Um, and you can continue doing different types of questions. Uh, I'm not going to show you every single one. Grid, date and time. I mean, they'll you'll see what they mean. Grid is probably a little bit uh, complicated for right now. But when you look at them, then you can see what this is what they look like. So first name here, last name, what period are you in my class, which is a good fruit, and they can choose multiple ones. Uh, do you like beach or mountains better? And what do you think this class rate it one to five? Um, then at the end, I can say, you know, whatever I want to say is a little thank you. Thanks, that's all. Um, and then I can go ahead and send out the form. One thing you do want to do before you send it out to people is choose a response destination. This means what we'll be able to see at the end. So I'm just going to choose the spreadsheet that they, they suggest. It says EdTech TV form responses. Really, really easy for me to understand. So we'll create that. It says here it's setting up the spreadsheet. And it's good to go. So now if I send this form out, copy the link, and I fill in the information, and I love it, and submit, then it says that's all, and that, that gives everything. That at this point, the student is done, and we are going to go ahead and look on the back end of things. So we'll go back here, and we can click on this button that says View Responses. I filled this in twice, so here it is. Brent, Warner, what period are you in? First class, which fruit is good? Apples and pears, and do I like the mountains or beach better? Mountains, and what do you think of this class five? So you can see I can scroll all the way down, and just get all the collection of information from everybody. Really, really useful to have it here on a spreadsheet instead of spread out amongst 20 different papers from all of your students. When you go back to your Google Drive page, you can also see that you have access to both the original form and the responses at any time. So if you need to change the information or copy it and create a new one based on the original, you can totally do that. Really, really useful for quizzes, but if you want to have a slightly different quiz for different classes, you can set it up that way. Um, today I also want to show you the quick little bonus that's really cool and a lot of people don't take advantage of. If you go right into it and at the bottom when you're sending out the form, check this out. Here it says send form via email. So if you send to a Gmail address, you can actually look at the form right in the email and you can fill out the information right in there. So I'll send it to my EdTech TV email address. And I've got this one that says include form in email. And I can customize the information if I want to, but I'm just gonna send it. Then I'll go over to my email. 
All right, here I am. Check this out. If I click right into the email form, all the information is right there. So if I changed out the information and submit it, it's going to send me out to an external page real quickly, but that's it. It's just saying thank you. So people can do this right from their email. Think how useful that might be to send out to parents and they don't have to do anything special. The trick is, of course, that they do have to have a Gmail address. But I can go back into my drive, check out the responses, and you can see there it is. John Smith, second period, Oranges Beach, and four. So useful, so cool, and kind of the possibilities here are limitless as much as your imagination, as always with all of this technology. So great. So um, I really, really hope you're going to take advantage of this if you haven't been already. Uh, play around with it and think about what you can do with uh, the different forms and how you can use them for quizzes, for surveys, and, and everything else that you might want to collect information on. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap it up. So for your homework, I've got a couple of assignments. First one is I want you to create and send me your own form. You can send it to me on Facebook, on Twitter. You can send it to me by brent at edtech.tv. However you like, send it to me. I'll fill it out and uh, we'll take a look and see if you've got everything right. Next is I'd like you to fill out my form. I've embedded one of these forms right on uh, this page. So if you go to edtech.tv slash Google Forms 101, that's where this tutorial is on the website if you're not looking at it on YouTube or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead and fill that out for me because it'll help me get you guys the information that you want. And of course, for extra credit, you can always follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Um, you guys have seen the links before. I'd love it if you follow me, uh, Twitter at EdTechPrincipal, YouTube user slash EdTechPrincipal, and Facebook.com slash EdTechTV. Thanks so much, you guys. I really hope you have a great time trying this out, and I look forward to talking to you and seeing your forms soon. Take care.